Whoever fights monsters should see to it that in the process he does not become a monster. And if you gaze long enough into an abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. The individual has always had to struggle to keep from being overwhelmed by the tribe. If you try it, you will be lonely often and sometimes frightened. But no price is too high to pay for the privilege of owning yourself. The snake which cannot cast its skin has to die. As well the minds which are prevented from changing their opinions. They cease to be mind. A thinker sees his own actions as experiments and questions, as attempts to find out something. Success and failure are for him answers above all. What? If some day or night a demon were to steal after you into your loneliest loneliness and say to you, this life as you now live it and have lived it, you will have to live once more and innumerable times more. Would you not throw yourself down and gnash your teeth and curse the demon who spoke thus? Or have you once experienced a tremendous moment when you would have answered him, you are a god and never have I heard anything more divine. Beware that, when fighting monsters, you yourself do not become a monster. For when you gaze long into the abyss, the abyss gazes also into you. Doubt a sin. Christianity has done its utmost to close the circle and declared even doubt to be sin. One is supposed to be cast into belief without reason, by a miracle, and from then on to swim in it as in the brightest and least ambiguous of elements, even a glance towards land, even the thought that one perhaps exists for something else as well as swimming, even the slightest impulse of our amphibious nature is sin. And notice that all this means that the foundation of belief and all reflection on its origin is likewise excluded as sinful. What is wanted are blindness and intoxication and an eternal song over the ways in which reason has drowned. God is dead. God remains dead. And we have killed him. How shall we comfort ourselves, the murderers of all murderers? What was holiest and mightiest of all that the world has yet owned has bled to death under our knives, who will wipe this blood off us? What water is there for us to clean ourselves? What festivals of atonement, what sacred games shall we have to invent? Is not the greatness of this deed too great for us? Must we ourselves not become God simply to appear worthy of it? Meaning and morality of one's life come from within oneself. Healthy, strong individuals seek self-expansion by experimenting and by living dangerously. Life consists of an infinite number of possibilities and the healthy person explores as many of them as possible. Religions that teach pity, self-contempt, humility, self-restraint and guilt are incorrect. The good life is ever-changing, challenging, devoid of regret, intense, creative and risky. Today as always, men fall into two groups, slaves and free men. Whoever does not have two-thirds of his day for himself is a slave. Whatever he may be, a statesman, a businessman, an official, or a scholar. But the worst enemy you can meet will always be yourself. You lie and wait for yourself in caverns and forests. Lonely one, you are going the way to yourself. And your way goes past yourself, and past your seven devils. You will be a heretic to yourself, and witch and soothsayer, and fool and doubter, and unholy one and villain. You must be ready to burn yourself in your own flame. How could you become new, if you had not first become ashes? To predict the behavior of ordinary people in advance, you only have to assume that they will always try to escape a disagreeable situation with the smallest possible expenditure of intelligence. One must shed the bad taste of wanting to agree with many. Good is no longer good when one's neighbor mouths it. And how should there be a common good? The term contradicts itself, 
whatever can be common always has little value. In the end it must be as it is and always has been. Great things remain for the great, abysses for the profound, nuances and shudders for the refined, and in brief, all that is rare for the rare.